So, there are so many people that taught me the joy of giving. One being my grandmother, one being my fifth grade school teacher, and last but not least is this congregation has really taught me the joy of giving. And not only giving monetarily, even though those things are quite important and quite needed, also giving of yourself, giving of your time, giving of what you have to give. And in many cases, that may be the gift of prayer. I don't know uh, if you know it, but every day prayer is offered from 12 to 1230 uh, by our ministers here. Uh, we have groups that meet and pray for each of us. I've heard in different meetings my name being lifted up personally in prayer. And I say that to tell you this little story that happened to me a few weeks ago, just to let you know how vital and important that ministry of prayer is. Uh, I was traveling to North Carolina to visit my mom who was having some health issues. Uh, so I was going down to be the good son to help her out with some things, get her a walker, set her up with life alert, and those things that as she's getting older that she needed to have to be able to live independently. So I'm in North Carolina visiting my mom. I have to go to Greensboro to get her a walker. So I'm in my car. I'm driving on Interstate I-85. Um, and the traffic just seems to slow down and stop. Well, there's a transfer truck in front of me. He stops. I stop. I'm about three foot behind the truck. Just a few seconds later, maybe 30 seconds, I look in my rearview mirror and I see a car coming up behind me that is not slowing down. He's going 65 or 70, and he is not going to stop. And I see it coming, and sure enough, he rams into me and pushes me into the back of this truck. So, shaken up, I get out, very sore, my back's hurting really bad. It's like, oh my goodness, why did this happen? I'm sitting there on the side of the road. The EMT comes, takes me to the emergency room. I get some tests done. My sister comes pick me up. I go back home the next few days as I'm recuperating. I keep thinking, goodness, why did this happen to me? I'm sitting there minding my own business, and this has to happen to me. Why does it have to happen to me? What did I do? What, what's going on here? Why me? Why me? You know, and I'm sure we all have these moments, you know, when we have circumstances in our life that we take that time and go, why, why me? What did I do? And as I was having my little pity party, my moment of saying, why me, I had a revelation. I don't know where it came from except from the Holy Spirit that said to me, you know what? If your car had not been where it was and that little guy in that Kia, he was probably in his late 60s, early 70s, little tiny car, if he hadn't hit you, he would have hit that transfer truck at 70 miles an hour and he most likely would not have lived to tell that tale. And I go, wow, that puts everything in perspective. So even though circumstances may be not great for me, I mean, my car's totaled, I'm in pain, but I'm still here, able to breathe the air and see the sunshine and be here with you folks today. So I would encourage you to know that this church is in prayer for you, and prayer does miraculous things. And even though we may not know the circumstance at the moment, just sit and think and pray about it. And many times you'll get the revelation of maybe why you're in that particular place. So all things work together for good for those who love the God. And so there you go. We don't always know why, but we do know that we're not in control and I thank God that I'm here today, and I thank God that I was where I was that perhaps saved that gentleman's life as well. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.